Following a historic legal settlement of a sex abuse lawsuit, one question now looming for the Catholic Church is how to pay for it and other potential lawsuits. The exact amount of the settlement has been kept confidential, but experts say it could cost the Archdiocese tens of millions of dollars. Yesterday, the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis, along with the Diocese of Winona, said that they were considering all options to pay for the settlement, including bankruptcy. Kate Raditz is outside the cathedral in St. Paul. So, Kate, if the diocese, all of them, if they file for bankruptcy, would that affect churchgoers? Yeah, Amelia, that's a great question. And the answer to those questions are a little bit complicated. Experts say that if the insurance company does not step up to pay for the majority of these claims, then it's very possible we could see uh, the diocese then file for bankruptcy. But whether or not that would then mean that a Catholic church or a Catholic school would close in Minnesota because of that, based on history, that's not going to happen. As the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis, along with the Diocese of Winona, review their finances to see if they have the assets to pay for their lawsuits, bankruptcy remains on the table. You always have that further question. Uh, will the insurance cover everything that is being sought? Insurance does cover negligence, but if they won't cover claims involving intentional wrongdoing, the Catholic Church will have to come up with the funds. Dioceses that have faced liability like this before have used the bankruptcy code Claiming bankruptcy would mean the church could pay a fraction of the settlement. Over the past decade, 11 dioceses across the country have filed bankruptcy due to lawsuits. And there's a good way and a bad way of filing for bankruptcy, and there's models of each right now. Attorney Jeff Anderson says the best case scenario in a bankruptcy filing would be holding the church accountable to survivors. While he says it is possible for a Catholic church or school to close down as a result of bankruptcy, it's never happened within any diocese that's filed. The good work that they do in the parishes and in the schools and the hospital continues unabated and uninterrupted. A judge can still reject the bankruptcy filing. Anderson says he hopes insurance will avoid a bankruptcy claim. We just want to make sure they don't continue the, the, the dangerous and reckless practices that have been revealed. I reached out to the Archdiocese of St. Paul of Minneapolis, but did not hear back. Attorney Jeff Anderson said that if they were to file for bankruptcy, he says he and his clients would work with the diocese to make sure that churches, uh, schools, any Catholic organizations in the state would continue to operate as normal. He said they just want to make sure that these survivors have justice, both in truth and in compensation, Amelia. All right, Kate, thank you. Meanwhile, the whistleblower in the church abuse scandal says Archbishop John Ninestead and the rest of the Archbishop's entire top leadership should step down. I think, you know, just looking at my second point, which is that there's still priests that need to be removed from ministry, I think that raises a lot of questions. Jennifer Hasselberger was the Archbishop's top legal advisor until she resigned last year. She went public with her concerns and claims that the church covered up and mishandled abuse allegations. Hasselberger believes new leadership is needed to implement the new policies designed to protect children. In the past, Archbishop Neinstedt has said he will not resign.